three, two. Before I say one, this video better get a lot of likes because I've been working my ass off. Alexa, turn on the studio. God, my hands are sore. I've spent the last two weeks turning a three-car garage into a full-blown YouTube studio. No contractors, no hired help, just me. So in today's video, I am gonna show you exactly how I did it and reveal the brand new Mindseed TV studio. This is awesome. This is probably the coolest studio I have ever built. I think it's the coolest YouTube studio possibly ever. So are you ready to check out the new studio? Let's go. First, I had to construct wall frames to put up drywall in order to make it look less like a garage, but I had to leave access because there's circuit breakers and there's also a water heater in the garage, so I couldn't block those off and I needed to create an access door and build a little hallway so that if I ever need to reach the circuit breaker or the water heater, I can still access those and I won't be completely blocked out. After that, I needed to seal those little tiny cracks in between the drywall and those little gaps and imperfections. I hit it with some drywall tape, used a little bit of spackle or joint compound. I had to spread that out evenly throughout all the cracks. Once this dried, I was able to sand it down, get it nice and smooth, and then I decided to paint the studio, and I went with a royal blue color. Next, I began installing the wood flooring, and I quickly realized it is hot as shit in a garage in South Florida. That could be a big deal because if the garage is always hot, I'm gonna be sweating while I'm working, suffocating, the humidity, it's not a good thing. I bought a portable Toshiba from Home Depot and it sits in the corner of the room, basically blowing out cold air. However, for recording purposes and also while I'm editing, it's really loud and it was bothering me. It was like filling up the whole room with sound. So I needed to find an alternative way to get cold air into the garage. So I went back to Home Depot, bought like an aluminum tube, and I basically connected the tube to where the cold air comes out of the portable AC, and then I connected it to the wall, and I put it on the back side of the wall so that now it will be outside of the room that I'm building. I cut out a hole, put a vent there, and I wrapped that damn thing probably 10 times with insulation, insulation tape, just to make sure that none of that cold air would be escaping on its way to the vent. Problem solved. After the AC was installed, I went and finished the wood floor. And these are literally tongue and groove wood boards. You just tap them into one another, they connect, they click into place, you hit it down. I've done that in the past before, so this wasn't really too difficult or complicated for me. I felt like having wood floors in the garage added a really nice look. However, that would cause an issue for something that I'll discuss later in this video. Then I started placing these really cool PVC plastic panels that I ordered on Amazon. Now these panels are so sick, they add a cool accent wall to any room that you want to set up in your house. I actually did that to my living room wall as well. The TV looked so alone in the center of the wall, so I decided I was going to go ahead and deck it out with these cool PVC panels. Honestly, it looks like something that you would see landing on the moon, and I love the way that it looks. I highly recommend you guys check this out if you've never seen these before because they're not that expensive and they could really make your place look sick. Everything that I'm mentioning in this video, there will be links down below in the description. But in the garage, I chose more of like a geometric, angly kind of panel because I wanted the light to reflect and cast a lot of shadows when I have like my backlights up there. And then I had a few of these circular panels left over, so I decided to paint them black and add a little bit of accent to that back wall behind the studio desk. And I thought it looked really cool because they kind of remind me of speakers in a way. So when I painted them black, it kind of gives you like that illusion of you got a whole wall full of like these giant speakers. I got a bunch of speakers on the studio anyway, but I thought that was a really cool touch to add in. Once all the panels were installed, I began constructing a studio desk that I ordered a few months ago. I've been waiting for this house to be finished so that I could move in and start setting up stuff in the garage. And I finally was able to build it. So this is the Studio Desk XL. Super cool. This is great for anybody that's producing music, producing videos. And this has kind of been an issue for me in the past because a lot of desks don't have enough room for all the things that I have. Studio monitors, mixing panels, a typing keyboard, a music keyboard, a microphone, headphones, mouse, you start running out of space when you have a really small computer desk and now I was able to finally build and construct this Studio XL which has tons of room on it, double monitor setup, 
and now I have all of my equipment laid out in front of me and I still have room to play. After that I went onto the wall opposite of the room and I really wanted to have one dark wall so I went to Home Depot, I bought this cork board, it's like 4x8, they're almost the same size of the drywall panels and I decided to go with the dark wood, I hung up these panels. Once I installed the cork boards and I had the wood wall set up, you know that I have to go above and beyond for the channel so I kind of ordered a little bit of an expensive neon sign. It says Mind Seed TV and it's pretty much the size of the entire wall. So as I mentioned earlier, the wood floor looks really cool in the garage, but the next step was soundproofing the garage. If you have a room with flat floors, flat walls, you're gonna get a reverb. When you clap your hands, there's like this echo that goes all around the room and it sounds like you're in a bathroom or you're in like a garage. Honestly, it doesn't matter how good your video quality is. If my audio sounds bad, you will automatically lose interest. You could have high quality video, low quality sound, and you're gonna lose viewers. You could have high quality sound, low quality video, you're gonna lose viewers. You gotta have both combined and that's really important to me when I'm making these videos, so I had to figure out a way to soundproof it. So one way of combating the reverb in the studio, I ordered these orange panels. They're acoustic panels, so they're made out of foam, and they're supposed to absorb some of that reverb when you're in the room, but I really didn't like the initial color that they were. They were kind of a blood orange. So I painted these panels. First, I hit it with a primer so that the paint would stick. I painted them more of a tangerine color, and then I spaced them out evenly, measured it out, hung those up around the studio, and now I have these cool looking orange foam panels all around the studio. Obviously, if I would have done carpet flooring in the studio, it would have taken a lot of the reverb away, and that seems like it would have been the easier route. But for the looks, I really wanted that wood floor, and I knew that it was gonna be a little bit hard to get away from that reverb and that room echo. I have been building this studio in my mind, and on paper and drawing out blueprints for what I wanted to do in here. One thing that was super important to me was having track lights that run all the way around the entire studio. So that way, if I wanted to like move certain lights or have certain things lit up in the background, I could. And I went ahead and installed these track lights, but I also used smart bulbs. So that way I could tell Alexa to turn on and turn off anything in the studio. Also the AC that I got was a uh, smart AC, so I connected that to Alexa as well. So I could say, Alexa, turn on the studio air. She'll turn on the studio air. I could say, start up the studio. Everything in the studio turns on. I was able to find like a four pack of some really good ones for like 25 bucks. I'll leave a link down in the description for that. Make sure that you check the screw size for the bulb that you plan on using. Cause if you try to get a regular light bulb that would go into like a lamp or like a house light, that might not be what would work with a track light. Just make sure you know what type of bulb you're ordering before you order it. After the track lights were up, I decided that because I could see my garage door from the living room, I thought it would be a really cool idea if I replaced that door with a glass door. So that way when I'm looking towards the studio, I could see in the studio, and when I'm in the studio, I could see out. And I also installed a touchpad lock, so that way if I have company over or somebody's here when I'm not here, nobody can come in the studio without my access. And although this doesn't really serve any purpose for video editing or recording, it's just kind of a peaceful ambience to have in the studio. So I installed a little digital fireplace that I had in my storage, and then I went outside, ripped a bunch of branches off some trees, put the branches in there, and now it actually looks like a wood-burning fireplace in the studio, and I just love the peace that that brings when I'm in here working. Then I thought it would be really cool to add like movement to the ceiling because you really don't see that that often. So I got one of these bedroom light projectors that actually looks like water moving. So I aimed that up towards the ceiling and it looks really awesome on the ceiling of the studio. But then I kind of modified it a little bit because it was going all over the walls and the light was going on the floor and all around the studio. Basically it looked like a discotheque. I didn't want that for the studio. So I actually added duct tape to this and I blocked off the sides, the bottoms and the top so now the projector light only shines within the square that the track light creates. I did set up a couch in here in case I wanted to record in a different area, but there is someone that loves always being by my side, and honestly, I'm just declaring that as her couch because Zoe loves to be next to me at all times. Doesn't matter if I'm working, she'll lay next to me six, seven hours while I'm on the computer. She's like the most loyal dog any man could ever ask for, so this couch is Zoe's couch now. So she just hangs out there while I'm working and keeps me company. I love that dog to death.
All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. That was the whole process of me building my new YouTube studio. I am super happy with it and it's gonna enable me to make more videos in the future. And I know a lot of you guys are wondering why haven't you been getting scary episodes every week like you used to? And that's because I've had a lot of other projects that I'm working on in order to build the channel up into something bigger and better. And anytime that I disappear for a little while and you don't see my face right here talking to you, it's because I'm building something big. So just know that my absence means that I'm coming back with a lot. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.